Hey, welcome back to Average Home Theater. I'm Nelson. Um, hope you all having a good Labor Day weekend. Today's Labor Day and, uh, you know, got to go back to work tomorrow. But I wanted to, you know, talk about something different. You know, not do a movie review this time, but I want to give an update on my theater, right? Um, the only thing that's changed is I added a SVS um, PB1000 10-inch subwoofer man <laughs> I don't know what took me so long um, you know for some reason I upgraded everything else before the subwoofer I mean I had two subs and they were they were fine they were okay nothing wrong with them but man once you start getting better gear you notice a big difference and you know I had a two subwoofers right a Polk audio tennis sub which was only two years old I bought it when I moved into this house and my other subwoofer was a KLH subwoofer. It's like 15 years old. So it was time to upgrade, right? And, you know, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow to, to drop, you know, 500 bucks on a subwoofer. And I know people spend way more than that. They have subs that are like $3,000. Um, but, you know, I don't have that kind of change. Um, one step at a time. And that's kind of why I want to, why I wanted to do this video. You know, I... I did a lot of research when I first started getting into wanting to have a dedicated space, right? For 20 something years, I've had surround sound. When I lived in an apartment, when I first moved out, I bought my first house and then uh, I got married and we, and we moved into a, a, another house. Same thing there, had surround sound, always upgrading my gear as I went, you know, whether it be receivers or speakers, going from bookshelf speakers to some towers and but they were always in the living room, right? I never had, a, I never used a dedicated space. And about four years ago, um, we decided, you know, we have one daughter and we're not gonna have any more children. And I wanted to have a man cave, right? So bought like a 55 inch TV, insignia TV. Um, and I had pieces of old box surround sound systems that I've had or that I've taken from people when they were getting rid of them and whatnot. And I had a little makeshift theater in in a bedroom and it was fine. It was great. You know, it immersed me when I was watching movies. It immersed me playing PlayStation, which I'm about 50-50. And um, so, you know, but when I started to, when I wanted to get serious, then I started looking at projectors and whatnot. So, you know, when people ask me, you know, like how much did it cost or uh, how much should I spend? Well, you know, when it comes to this, it's just all relative. It's all, you have to decide what you want to do. Are you trying to just have surround sound in the living room for you and your wife or your husband, whoever, to just have movie night every now and then? Are you a movie freak like me where you want a dedicated space? Where, you know, you can, and it can be, I mean, I'm in a bedroom. Just a bedroom where you can black out the windows and have a projector and you know whatnot so there's so many different ways to do it you know many different ways to skin a cat you just have to decide which way you want to go I personally I'm a projector guy right um, now I went from having surround sound in my living rooms all the time so I don't have it at all we moved into this house we knew we were gonna do this room and I we just watched TV in the living room for you know normal stuff anytime we watch a movie whether you know me by myself or with me and my wife or me and my wife and my daughter or even a couple of friends i have three seats so you know seating is limited we come in here this is where i watch my movies um so with that i just want to kind of go through how i've done it how much i've spent so you can get an idea you know there's many people that put youtube videos out there that say oh you know home theater on a budget and all that stuff and that's fine that's great great info you know but I just wanted to you know I'm an average guy with an average home theater right so I just wanted to kind of show what I did and not that my gear is fantastic but I have pretty decent stuff and it's taken me a while to get there but you know you can do it and it doesn't have to be you know the top of the line stuff there's very affordable gear that you can get and have a good experience in your home you know of course the more you're willing to spend the closer to a real theater experience you'll have but um, 
it's not that hard to get a good immersive feeling in a dedicated space. It's a little harder in the living room, you know, people walking or whatever. You can't black it out. So, you know, surround sound, you know, that's kind of self-explanatory. You can, you can get the sound bars now that have three speakers just in the bar and then they have a subwoofer that you put towards the back and your two surround speakers connect to that and you don't have to do any wiring. That's probably great for a lot of people. You can get those for less than $400, a Vizio. So you can go that route. I am all for that stuff because I do not like sound bars, you know, at all. I just, you know, if people ask me about them, well, the only sound bar I would ever get is if you have some rear speakers to go with it because nothing takes the place of having rear channels. You know, Atmos is great and all this other stuff is fine, but, you know, just a sound bar, it's just loud sound to me. It doesn't sound good. So I'm not, a, I'm not gonna advocate for sound bars unless you have one that gives you some rear channels. That's just me, you know, you do you. But anyway, so, you know, when we first did our theater room or my dedicated space in the other house, this is what I had. I had, I bought a new receiver for that. So I bought an Ankyo, see, TXNR777, right? It was like 500 bucks, THX certified, seven channel Ankyo receiver. I jumped on it when, when, you know, I decided I wanted to have a more theater-like experience. Before that, I had some, a cheap Denon that was like, you know, a $300 receiver and didn't really do very well. So I went up a little bit nicer for that. Um, my front stage were two um, which I ended up bringing here when I first moved but they were infinity towers that I bought probably in like 2004 2005 I mean they were old but I paid like four or five hundred bucks for the pair at the time which you know not too bad they had like two five and a quarters in them and a, uh, and a tweeter and they were really good for um, highs and some mids you know but they were just okay. Um, and then my center channel was a Polk Audio. I forget what it's what, what the model number is, but I paid like 250 bucks for it, right? So that was $250 for a center channel 15 years ago. You know, it was a, it was a decent one. It wasn't by any means bottom of the line because now, I mean, $250 center channel now is not too shabby. So, you know, I, I, and I knew that the center channel was very important, which is why I, I got that one. And I had the KLX sub, which I had been having. So my first projector was a an Epson 1040 home something or other. And a little 1080p projector, I paid like 500 bucks. And, you know, because projectors, you can get them pretty big, I mean, up to like, I mean, real expensive was like 150, but the average, you know, about 120 for an inexpensive projector, you can get a 120 inch screen. And, you know, if you're not, if you're not into the 4K stuff, you just want a good, I mean, there's so many options for 1080p projectors for less than a thousand dollars that look really good. Um, so I went with that one because, you know, I was on a, a tight budget at the time. I already had the speakers, I bought a receiver, and the um, uh, which the projector. That's the only thing I spent money on. Everything else I just had. My rear channels, because I just had a 5.1 system. My rear channels were some Sony speakers from an old box system. I had them on speaker stands on either side of the chairs. And look, guys, this was an 11 by 11 bedroom I was in, and it it immersed me. I had like right at 90 inches, 80 something, 90 inches on the wall for the projector. I had my 5.1 surround and I had my um, KLH subwoofer and man, I was loving life, you know? So inexpensive, you know, but it did the job. I playing game, video games on, on a big screen like that. Now I know sometimes some projectors have a, um, what do they call that? Uh, uh, there's a delay or, um, the response time, you know, can be kind of bad for gaming. 
So if you're into gaming, like I am, you have to look for a projector that uh, handles gaming well. And the one I have now really does, which is why I went with it. But um, so yeah, there's nothing like gaming on a big screen like that. Talk about immersive. Uh, when you're playing games like Red Dead Redemption or whatever, I mean, you feel like you're in that world. So that's what I had for my first theater room, right? A little 11 by 11 room, 5.1, and it sounded fantastic. It looked great. You know, it's all I needed, and that's all probably a lot of people need to have a good experience. Um, so, you know, that cost was, what, you know, less than $1,000, right at $1,000 I spent because a lot of the gear I already had, you know. If you go and you if you can add on a subwoofer for 100 bucks, $130, um, you can add maybe some Atmos because the, the receiver was capable of some Atmos. I could have done that, but you know, I didn't need to. So now when I moved into this house, this is where things get a little interesting. So when we were buying this house, we made the agreement that we were going to get a four bedroom house because I wanted to have my dedicated room again. And we were going, you know, the house was just so much bigger. This room is like 13 by 15 ish, something like that. It has, it's an upstairs. So, you know, some of the ceilings and, and everything are shaped kind of funny, but it's give or take 13 or 13 by 15. I was able to get a third seat in here. I was only able to have two in my other one. So I have my three seats. Um, I have a 92 inch screen and this is where I was like, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it right. All right. So I, I paid a local um, audio video place to come and install my Atmos channels and my, my rear channels because I'm not too keen on cutting into things. I get nervous and whatnot, but I'm sure a lot of you can probably do it yourself. Um, but I was still on a budget, right? I, I had the same center channel. I brought my Polk center channel, my Infinity Towers. I bought one more subwoofer, so I'd have two, which is when I got the Polk audio sub. And my, sura my surround in wall, or um, let's see on my little paper here, Polk Audio RC 65Is. They're like six and a half inch um, speakers. And then the Atmos is Polk Audio R60Is. The 65Is were 230 a pair, and that was $100 for the pair. You know, 330 bucks, I had my, my rear and, and Atmos channels, and then I brought my other stuff. I paid $2,000 for the installation because he didn't just do the speakers. He also ran the wire because all my gear terminates in the closet. If you see my video, you'll see it. Everything terminates in the closet, right? So he ran all my wires and he did all that stuff. He was here for eight hours. Um, he, oh, he uh, mounted the projector for me. He did all that stuff. So that was right around $2,000. Um, these seats total, I have... $2,400 because the love seat was 17 and the additional one was 700 um, So now I'm going to go down my gear that I upgraded to after I moved in. So I ended up getting this. I had a, uh, oh, I skipped a, a projector. When I decided I wanted 4K, I bought an Optoma UHD 50 and I paid $1,200 for that thing. That is a really good projector. Um, it didn't handle HDR very well, but man, the picture quality was superb. I mean, just the sharpness, I mean, it just, it looked great. HDR, it kind of struggled, so a lot of times I'd have to turn HDR off. And so I felt like I was missing out. So uh, that's when I upgraded to this one. So I have the Epson 5050UB, I paid 3,000. That's the, that's how much it's been since it released. And every now and then it'll go on sale for a little bit, but right around 3,000 is what you'll pay. It's a three LCD as opposed to a DLP. So, you know, the image sharpness isn't quite as good as the Optoma and I, and I kind of noticed that, but I'm really looking for it. You know, people who come and see, they, they have no idea. But when I sit there and I critique it, I see it every day, I notice it. Um, but this thing is great with the HDR. I mean, the colors and everything, it's superb. Um, the gaming, latency is great i don't really notice anything now i don't competitive game i don't i don't pvp and play all that other stuff 
but just me playing by myself or playing co-op with people, um, it's just, it's great. My screen is a $200 silver ticket uh, white screen, one-to-one -one game. It's great. Um, no reason I, you know, I'm hard pressed for somebody to convince me that you have to spend $700 or $1,000 on a screen. Um, I know the silver ones give you more contrast and all that stuff. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I get it, but I want a little more brightness and you need a basic white one-to-one -one gain screen for that. And this, there's, I mean, it's light controlled, no reason for me to go anywhere else. My receiver I upgraded to that, to an Ankyo RZ830 THX 9.2 channel receiver. Now this thing I got for a steal. Um, Audioholics posted a thing a couple years ago that they were on sale that it was like a closeout deal Ankyo was doing. This is like an $1,100 receiver. I paid $498 for it. Brand new out the box. Shipped to my house. $498. A steal. And this thing does great. It's a nine channel receiver, but I only power seven channels. Plenty of power. Um, I am gonna add a, a small amplifier to power my two front towers because they're, you know, that's some good speakers and I wanna get the most out of them. I'll get to that. Um, my Blu-ray player is a Panasonic UB420, 200 bucks. Um, I have Apple 4K TV, $180. Now here's where it gets interesting. My front stage are the Martin and Logans, uh, 60 XTIs. These things are a beast, okay? They're expensive, 1,700 a pop. So $3,400 for the pair. But it was my 40th birthday present. I explained it in my previous video. My wife wanted to, you know, she's like, I wanna get you something nice. And so that's when I went with the front stage because I got the matching center channel which is the Martin & Logan 50 XTI, $1,000, okay? Um, I still have the same surround, Polk surrounds and Atmos because I haven't got that far yet. Between upgrading the front sound stage and then getting the subwoofer and the projector, that has got to slow down a little bit, right? Got to keep mama happy. So those will come in due time. Um, I already said the subwoofer is 500. Um, so yeah, I'm right around 10,000, 9,400 really, but to get a receiver equivalent to this one, you're gonna pay about 1,100. So that's why I put 10,000 is what I have in current gear. Now it sounds like a lot and it is, but just understand I didn't buy it all at once. You know, like this chair, I've had these for like four years. I bought these like four years ago. So, you know, you get things gradually. You get them piece by piece. You don't have to go out and drop 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars all at once. You can get gear, a baseline like I did, and upgrade, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I know there's a lot of snobs out there that say, you know, well, if you got front Martin and Logan, you gotta have Martin and Logan everything. You gotta have, you don't. <laughs> all my stuff was mismatched for so long, and you just, that. You just don't, you know. I did it for the front stage. It was my 40th birthday. It was a big deal. My wife wanted to go all out, so I got all three, right? But if I wouldn't have been able to do that, it's fine. You don't, you don't need to do that. And you know, I, I I've been on a lot of forums and I see the snobs. You know, oh, uh, your rear channels should be a little bit lower. They should be so amount of inches above your ears. And I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> Uh, yes, you could always be better, right? But just because somebody says something on a form or whatever doesn't make it so. Whatever you enjoy, it's fine. If it sounds good to you, I mean, like I had those other towers and, and those other subwoofers and I, I thought it, my, my stuff sounded great and it did. You don't know what you don't know. Once you upgrade, then you're like, ah, this is much better. But that doesn't mean what you have is crap or it sucks. So I guess that was kind of my main reason for wanting to do this is because I know there's a lot of people who 
want to do, especially now with COVID and everything else, they want to have a, a space like this. A, a, but they just, I know, it's almost like peer pressure to people you don't even know. You feel like, man, well, if I get that, then, you know, if I happen to post, hey, guys, look what I have. If you're part of a group on Facebook or a forum, because I did it once and I just wanted to show off what I had and the amount of people that started critiquing and telling me to do this and telling me to do that. And I'm like, I didn't post this to ask your permission or for your blessing. I just wanted to show off my stuff, you know? Hey, look what I got. I'm, I got a home theater, you know? And I, I guess just some people, man, they, that's the world we live in now. So I want you, if you're watching this and you are, you know, wanting to do something like this, do what you can afford. Do it piece by piece if you have to and enjoy it because there's nothing like watching a movie and getting immersed in it. And the best way to do it, in my opinion, is a big display, which is why I go projector and not a TV because if you try to get a TV this size, you know, I'm not dropping 20 grand on a TV. So I have a 92 inch screen and when I'm watching the movie, I feel like I get immersed. I feel like I am in there. Um, and it's as close to a movie theater that I'm ever going to get. You know, yes, could I put lots of sound treatments, which I do want to do. I'll do that eventually. But, you know, it's fine. You don't, you don't have to have your room looking like a movie theater to enjoy it. So, anyway, with that, I'm going to take a sip of my water from my new mug. I'm getting ready for the Halloween season. Myself and Don are going to do some horror movie reviews and whatnot this month and next month because, you know, I love Halloween and I love horror movies. So we're going to do quite a few horror movies or Halloween type movies coming up. And um, yeah, I hope you like it and I hope you like this video. I hope it helped. You know, maybe you can, you know, now relax a little bit if you were worried or if you're you're going through YouTube looking for some advice you know yeah I've spent you know probably in total I mean over the 20 years probably close to twenty thousand dollars right but not all at once the most I've, I've spent at once is my front stage and you know that was a, a birthday present so hopefully this helps some people and doesn't you know they don't feel discouraged now and that they just relax get some gear and watch some movies all right and with that i'm gonna wrap it up hope you guys enjoy your uh labor day weekend and um yeah i'll see you on the next one